Good morning, this is Scott Collin. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the Kanata Report. I'm here once again with Frank Kanata for the second episode of a multi-part series looking back at the top stories of 2021 that we covered in the Kanata Report. In this episode, Frank discusses the leadership changes that took place at some of the big six OEMs during the past year. I was sad to see uh, Scott McCabe go from Toshiba. I thought he did an incredible job when he took over. I really did. I wish somehow or other somebody in this industry would understand there's a real talent that can help your business. And I hope he doesn't go away completely. But that does not take anything away from Larry White, who was replacing Scott, because if there were ever was somebody groomed to do what Larry is now doing, it's Larry. He's been there a long time, knows the people, knows the dealers. I mean, there's no, I, I, and I give credit to Scott McCabe for ensuring that that was a very smooth transition. Uh, Larry just kind of flowed right in and without any disruption at all. Ferrico Custom Braun is an, is an unknown. Uh, and I don't mean anything negative by it. It's just that he's coming out of Europe uh, and none of us have um, a real understanding of what he's all about in terms of where, where his strengths lie. Every, every executive brings something to the table. Some of it good, some of it not so good. But on, on balance, it's, a, it's generally a positive impact. I think in the brief conversation I interviewed Karsten, he sounds like uh, uh, a man who has a very keen understanding of what he would like to do. Uh, I know the reaction from people we both know real well at RICO has been very positive. Uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what it is he brings to the table. Kanika Minolta, Patrick Bono, I, I, am, I have to tell you in, in, in a humorous vein, and I don't, I'm not trying to make fun of Patrick. He's the first Japanese guy I've ever heard speak English with an Australian accent, <laughs> which I think is kind of cool. He's a nice, he, he's a real, real first class guy. He's a gentleman. You know, I, I like the conversation we had. We've talked on multiple occasions now. and. He is totally candid. Uh, I, I got to tell you, I, I'm thankful for that. This is not somebody who's a political animal. He's worrying about what he's going to say. He speaks the truth. Uh, and I think that speaks well for him. In terms of um, uh, Canon, uh, I, I wish I have had, the, I've had that, an opportunity to meet the new president, but I have not. Uh, and uh, I, I think that historically, uh, Cannon has used that position for multiple reasons. Sometimes it was it to bring in a strong person to do something specific. Other times it was viewed as giving somebody a chance to round out their experience as a Canon employee and sort of like um, uh, in, the, in the service they call it your final cruise. Uh, and you know, it, it's, it's viewed as, a, a, as something positive. I, I, and I don't know what his intent is really to, uh, to do or to bring to the table or to have Canon move forward. I hope at some point one of us has an opportunity to sit down with him to get some understanding. 